Welcome back, Linux enthusiasts. Today we have an exciting topic to dive into, interconnecting three networks using the powerful WireGuard VPN. In this video, we'll explore the ins and outs of this innovative technology and show you how to seamlessly bridge multiple networks for enhanced security and connectivity. Whether you are an IT professional, a networking enthusiast, or simply curious about the world of VPNs, this video is for you. WireGuard VPN, known for its simplicity, speed, and security, has gained immense popularity in the recent years. Its lightweight design and state-of-the-art encryption protocols make it a game-changer in the world of virtual private networks. My name is Philip. Let's get started. Let's imagine we have three nodes spread across different locations. For simplicity, they are all connected to 192.168.12.24 network that we call the public network. On top of that, each node has 10.x private network attached that's not directly connected to the internet. Node 1 has 10.1 private network, node 2 has 10.2, and node 3 has 10.3 network connected. We'll set up a VPN network from the 172.16 range. Node 1 will have .1 IP, Node 2 will have .2 IP, and Node 3 will have .3 IP, all coming from the same slash 24. We'll be building three VPN tunnels, one between Node 1 and Node 2, second between Node 1 and Node 3, and third between Node 3 and Node 2. This type of topology is called a mesh. It means that Every node is interconnected with every other node using point-to-point -point links. What we want to achieve is network reachability between VMs sitting in the 10.x private network behind our nodes. We want the traffic between our private networks to be tunneled with WireGuard VPNs over a public network. Let me show you how fast and easy it is. To speed up the configuration, I will be doing some tasks on three servers at the same time. Let's start with updating our packages list with apt update and installing WireGuard with apt install. WireGuard tries to mimic SSH, so for every server you need to create public and private keys. For that to happen, let's go to WireGuard configuration directory, set umask to 077, so our newly created keys will have read-write permissions only for the owner. Then, let's generate the keys with the following one-liner. The wg-gen-key command creates the private key and prints it to the standard output. We'll pipe it to the t command that will store the private key to a file and print it to the screen. The wg -pub key command accepts the private key and prints the corresponding public key, which will redirect to a file. OK, keys are there. Similar to SSH, the idea in WireGuard is to share the public key to the other party so that the other party can use the key to authenticate and encrypt data. Please mind that unlike other VPN technologies, WireGuard is not responsible for distribution of keys. Like in SSH, you need to exchange your public keys out of band. Next step is to create configuration for our WireGuard networking interface. In the method that we'll be using, the file name will be the interface name. In our case, the interface that we'll be creating is WG0. First section defines the interface. Address indicates IP of our WG0 networking interface. We'll use the 172.16/24 network. Node 1 will end with dot .1, Node 2 with dot .2. Next configuration parameter is the listen port. It indicates the UDP port that our server will listen on. Please mind that the WireGuard encapsulates IP packets over UDP. Last parameter is the private key. Let's load it from the key that we have just created. OK, our interface section is ready. Now let's define our peers. Peers are servers that we'll have connection to. First thing we need to provide is the public key of the remote server. We'll add it shortly. Next is a comma-separated list of IPs or ranges 
that the incoming traffic for this peer is allowed and to which outgoing traffic is directed. We are on node 1 and we define node 2 peer. In the allowed IP section, I'm providing VPN IP of node 2. If node 2 sends as a packet, it will be decrypted and authenticated and checked if the source IP is on the allowed list. If not, then the packet will be dropped. It also works the other way around. If I want to send traffic to node 2, it will be encrypted with node 2 public key. This fundamental concept of WireGuard operation is called crypto key routing. It tightly couples peer's identity with allowed IPs of the peer. Let's add node 3 peer to the configuration and update its allowed IP list. Now it's time to fill in the blanks. Let's grab the node 2 public key and put it in the public key field in the configuration. Let's do the same for node 3. I'll grab node 3 public key and put it in the public key field of node 3 peer. Here's how our node 1 configuration looks like. Interface section that holds the configuration for WG0 interface, our local VPN address, server UDP listen port and private key. Then we have our neighbors. Public key of our first neighbor along with its VPN address, then our second neighbor and its VPN address. Let's move to node 2. I'll open the WG interface configuration file. Let's fix our VPN address. Private key is OK. Let's go to peer section. Our first peer is node 1. So let's grab the node 1's public key and paste it here. Let's also update the allow IPs by putting a node 1 VPN address. Our second peer is node 3. So let's grab node 3 public key and paste it here. Just to double check. Node 2, its address and private key. Node 2 neighbors are node 1 and node 3. Lastly, let's move to node 3 and perform the same steps. I'm updating the address with dot 3. Our first neighbor is node 1, so let's put its IP address and grab node 1 public key. Our second neighbor is node 2, so let's put its address and grab its public key. Let's just double check. We have node 3 in the interface section and two peers, node 1 and node 2. So far we've defined our VPN IPs, allowed IP lists and exchange keys. To establish the connection, we need to add an endpoint field to our peers. Endpoint is an optional field that tells WireGuard to which IP address and port to send the packets to for a particular peer. It has a very interesting feature. Endpoint will be automatically updated to the most recent source IP and port of correctly authenticated packets. This allows the nodes to roam. We don't need the static IP address. If you are interested in a demo of such setup, please let me know down in the comment section. In our example, we'll use 192.168.12 network as our public network. Let's add the endpoint IP and port of node 2 and node 3 so that node 1 knows where to send packets. Let's move to node 2 and add IP and port of node 1 and node 3. Finally, let's repeat the same exercise on node 3 by adding IP and port of node 1 and node 2. Theoretically, we could add only half of the endpoints and not provide the other half, but then the nodes with the endpoints defined would have to be the ones that initiate the connection. Not providing an endpoint on one side is a common practice for clients behind a NAT that don't have access to the router or firewall to pass traffic. Such a client initiates a connection and keeps it open so the server knows where to send the data back. Our scenario assumes all IPs are accessible both ways. Finally, let's start our VPN with WG Quick Script. It will create and configure WG0 interface, assign an IP address and shrink MTU to accommodate for WireGuard envelope. Let's check if the interface is there. 
I try to ping node 2 VPN IP from node 1. Works. Let me try pinging node 3 from node 1. Also works. Please mind that those three nodes are interconnected in a mesh. Each node is connected to other two nodes. It's not a hub and spoke topology, but we are going through different tunnels. Let's enable WireGuard service so that VPN is active upon system startup. Our nodes have ETH0 interface, which is the public interface. WG0 interface, that is our VPN interface. But there's yet another interface, ETH2, that points towards our private network. Each node has its own non-overlapping 10 24 network. We'd like those network to be able to exchange traffic over a secure VPN tunnel. Let's go to our VMs on the client network. Each VM has a default gateway that points towards each respective node. Let's try to ping a VM from a different private network. Obviously, it will not work. The traffic will reach the default gateway. In our case, it's node 1, and there it will be dropped. First thing we need to do is enable packet forwarding by opening sysctl config and uncommenting forwarding for EPV4. Next, let's load the configuration with sysctl-p. I'm retrying the ping test. It still fails. Let's go to our nodes and check the routing table. As you can see, node 1 knows nothing about 10.2 network on node 2, nor 10.3 network on node 3. Let's go to our WireGuard configuration on node 1 and add 10.2 network in the peer section for node 2. It will make WireGuard accept traffic coming from 10.2 network from node 2. Let's add 10.3 network that belongs to node 3 to our peer section for node 3. I'm repeating the same steps on node 2 by adding 10.1 network that belongs to node 1 in the peer section for node 1 and adding 10.3 network that belongs to node 3 to the peer section for node 3. Lastly, on node 3 let's add 10.1 network to the peer section for node 1 and 10.2 network for the peer section for node 2. Now let's stop and start our VPN to reread the configuration. On node 1, WG Quick Script has added routing to 10.2 and 10.3 network via WG0 interface. Once WireGuard gets the traffic, it will know where to route it based on the allowed IP's entries. Let's double check if all nodes have respective routing table rules to 10. networks added. All looks good. Now the final test. I'm rerunning the ping from CL1 VM sitting behind node 1 to CL2 VM sitting behind node 2. Works. Now a quick speed test with iperf. All works great. One thing to mention is that client machines do not have internet access. For that to work, we need to enable NAT on the servers. Let's do that quickly by creating a NFTables configuration file. I'm creating my NAT EPV4 table with my chain inside. Chain type will be NAT and will register on the post routing hook. We'll ask the firewall to perform masquerade for packets going out via ETH, that is our public interface. Let's load the configuration with NFT-F and check if the configuration has been loaded and test internet access on the client. Works.